Boom, Lenin of Black Gemara. Today's daf is daf Kufir Dalad. It's the first day of Yom Tov Sukkot. We just learned that the, the dinim of Nachlois is like a Bezdin, you know, it's like a, a Dintera. And we said that if witnesses came in by a Shchivmera, then uh, a Shchivmera, the, the, the Mixes. So if a Shchivmera Mixes, he can never change. In other words, a person who's dying, he cannot change his mind. If a Shchivmera gives away all of his things, he could always change his mind if he recovers. But a Shchimera mixes, or if he wasn't a Shchimera, but he made it with a Kenyan, then he cannot change his mind. So the Gemara now, and we said that the people came in Mavaka to to, uh, to, um, to, um, to visit the person, they have a choice of acting either as witnesses or acting as the Bezdin. So now the Gemara continues a different argument, but it relates back to here. Um, Amr Yasef, uh, sorry, the two dots, three lines from the top of the page. Eat what we learned. Kenyan. In a case where you need a Kenyan, for example, a Shechiv Merab Mixes, he didn't give it all away, or he, you know, and, and or he wasn't dying, and he made a Kenyan that this is what I'm going to do. The question is, I'm, he's, he's making distribution. So when can he change his mind? That he you know what? I've taken it back. I don't want to uh, decide not to give this person. You know, people continuously change their, their last will and testament as they get older and things, circumstances change. <clears throat> Says the Gemara, so till when can you change your mind? So we're talking about either a matnas bori, a healthy matana with a Kenyan, or a matnas shchimer of a mixes. It will be learned, Kenyan, ad a masai chayza, till when can you change your mind? Rabba oma cold manchiation, as long as we're still sitting in the room, even if we change the subject, we're no longer talking about this, if we're talking about health matters or other things, as long as we're still sitting there for the same sitting, he can change his mind the last minute and say, look, you know what, I take it all back. So, so these people can go write a star or Paskin on the spot that this is, you know, final because the person has the right to reverse. is if a person is um, gives all of it away and he doesn't get and he doesn't get better. That's right. And Mitzel Kaim Abraham Mace. Rabbi, not only that, if, if you're not going to carry out his instructions, that in itself upsets him and accelerates the, the, the process. So you have to listen to him. Rabbi, otherwise, he feels he's totally lost control. Rabbi Yasef says, It's not good enough they're still sitting there. They still have to be talking about this subject. The moment they change subjects, even though they're still sitting there, you know, the original sitting, too late. It's over. That subject is over. You can no longer change your mind. <clears throat> Um, because generally speaking, even though you said you want something, you always want to have the the right to rethink it and reconsider it. But till when do we think that you have you think you have that right? Um, I'll prove it to you like I'm saying from the bright that we learned yesterday. Rabbi said that three people people went to visit a sick person to have a choice. Rots if they want, and they can act as witnesses and write down and, and, and go to a court and testify that this is how this is the distribution. Or rots if they want, they can pass it on the spot. Now, the moment they pass it on the spot, that's it. It's reversible. No, why is it reversible? If you said as long as they're sitting there and still sitting there, he can change his mind. How, what right do they have to pass it on the spot while they're still there? So it must be but if you've learned my way, that even though they're still sitting there, they change the subject. The moment they change the subject to a different subject, how the kids, whatever it is, then they can say, okay, that's it. We pass it now that whatever you said is final. Makes sense. The Isaac, that the cause of if you tell him as long as they're sitting there, he can change his mind. He's like, let's say that he's going to change his mind. What right do you have to uh, pass it as a din? I said this over Rav Kana, and this is what I told you last time, the proof, that there are two Rav Kahanas. Because in the end of Baba Kama, we learned Rav Kahana, who was a Talmud of Rab, who ran to Rabbi Yechon, and that's the first generation of Amaroim. And there's Avashi, the last generation, yeah. So the two Rav Kahanas, and that's how come how we reconcile sometimes Rav Kahana was a Kohen, and suddenly he was a Kohen. But here you see clearly, if a person is called Kohen, doesn't prove that he's a Kohen. Because Rav Kahana, you would think, is a name you give to a Kohen. Well, Rabbi Yehis, you want to ask a question? You want to ask back? No, Rabbi Yehis said, Menicha? Velechish dimah hadabay. Maybe, nowhere does it say that it had to be a, a different union. It says here that it seems to me that they can stand up in the middle of the union, or you know, whatever it is, and pass him right there. It seems like they're still talking about the subject. In Miratsu, I said, Din. So what, what's Rabbi Yehis going to tell me? It must be talking about they changed the subject. No, so I'll tell you, they're talking about they walked out and they came back. They walked, not only changed the subject, they walked out from that city. And then they try to come back. They know what we're passing. 
Why can't you do this? What's the problem? Or Rabbi Yisuf, what are you going to tell me? Because Rabbi Yisuf is better. Maybe he changed his mind. He's still talking about the same subject. Nobody can tell me. Then you're going to have to tell me that the sleek of Yana, that they stopped talking about that subject. New Yana, it's another subject. New Hachanami, they come over, how do you see? They booked out and they came back in. The Hilchus and the Halacha is, now this is, <coughs> the Hilchus, <are coughs> the Halacha is like Rabbi Yisif in three places. It's a Rachmanis. Rabbi Yisif and Abayi both had the same fate. They're all over Shas. Rabbi Yisif is one of the most prolific uh, Amaraim. And the Halacha is, that's a big machek, it's a shame when the Gemara says the Halacha Rabbi Yisif only in three places. It is limited to both Basra because all of these three dinim that we pass in is only with Basra or Kolotay to Kula. That the Halacha is, is never like Rabbi Yisif. Excuse me. We get, we we'll get to that in a second. Tracy says it. We'll see in a second. The Hilchah was Rabbi Yisim in three things. In the case of Sada, Sada we had in the first Pesach is where one of the brothers, the the the, 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 the father passed away, left behind you to show. The mother passed away, and one of the the, the the fields of the father was contiguous to the field of one of the brothers. The one that said, "You know, what? give it to me. I want this field by Metzi, but it's my best, my Metzi, but give it to me. It's only just." They said, we want, uh, um, we're going to charge you like Kibane Modern. In other words, they don't have to give him the part. That's what Yisuf says. They don't have him. We're going to charge you because we think it's worth more than the other fields. You want it? Pay for it. And he has a right to say that. Brothers have a right to say that. So um, that's one in the Lok Rabbi Yisuf. That's called Sada. The next one is Inyan, which is right here. That me Inyan, the Inyan, it doesn't have to walk out. It doesn't have to be the end of the city. My mid, just the Inyan, that's enough. And the third one is, Machza. In the case of Machza, what's the case of Machza? <laughs> the case of Machza is where a man says, I'm leaving my estate to my wife and to my kids. He has seven kids. So how do we what is how do we interpret his words? Does he mean you divide the property to eight parts and you give one part to the wife and you know one to each child? Or the wife is equal to the children. She gets 50% and they get 50%. And the Yesha says it's 50-50. And the Allah the Rabbi Yesha. Now the truth of the matter is there is no machis there. There's no way in the Gemara there an opinion that argues Rabbi Yisif. <clears throat> so, and yet, we pass on Rabbi Yisif. Why do you pass Rabbi Yisif? So Teisha says, because Abaya asked a question on it. Now, in our Gemara, we'll learn later, in our Gemara, there's no answer to Abaya's question. And so it's a big Kiddush to say, that even though Abaya had a strong question, that look at Rabbi Yisif. Remember, Rabbi Yisif, Abaya never let Rabbi Yisif go, say anything without him challenging him. Seldom we have rather. Usually it's Abaya. But, um, in our Gemara, says here, even though Rabbi Yisif answered well. Now, in our Gemara, we don't have it. So, obviously, Teisha had a different gear. Teisha says, we would have thought we won't listen to Rabbi Yisif's answer because he forgot how to learn. Yeah, so, so, you want to know who brought it up? Teisha brought it up. It's very hard to understand. If it's a good answer, it's a good answer. What the, we, we don't know what the answer was that Teisha is referring to because we don't have that Gemara. And our Gemara by asked the question, and that's what remains. Teisha says, I forgot the Shonya Rabbi Yisab, even though Rabbi Yisab answered it, we would have thought Rabbi Yisab, Ikri Talmud, that he forgot how to learn. So, therefore, we'll, we'll, we'll rely on a biased question rather than Rabbi Yisab's answers. I mean, Moshe, it's a good answer, it's a good answer. If it's not a good answer, it might not have come in for Rabbi Yisab, unless in Teisha's version, Rabbi Yisab brought a Brisa to support him or something. And then we say, well, Maybe the Brayse he remember was not correct because Abaye didn't didn't know that Brayse. Usually Abaye remember the Erevin how many times Abaye reminded Rabbi Yisuf, but you told us last time a different version, and so on. Anyway, says Gemara further. Next Gemara Haishas Beno. Luchayda the Mishnah has a, a full a full section that's completely redundant. It talks about that these people inherit but they don't bequeath, and then the, the then the next part is that those people on the receiving end they bequeath and they don't inherit. Obviously. It says that, for example, a son inherits his mother, but doesn't bequeath his mother. So why is the next part of the Mishnah to say, and a mother bequeaths her son, but doesn't inherit a son? You just said that. You said a son inherits from his mother, but doesn't bequeath to his mother. Then the next, and then the male, then the mother, be- he does a son and bequeaths to her son. So why does the Mishnah have to have the Mishnah in the three cases? What do you have to have that for? Aisha's been a Lamali, that whole section they don't need it for. Hatan al where he said in the Asia, Aisha's Ima, it says in the Asia. A man, his mother inherits but doesn't bequeath. So obviously, the mother bequeaths and doesn't inherit. And the next thing he says, Vaish is Easter and a man, his wife. A man, Yash is his wife but doesn't bequeath to his wife. So I have to repeat it again. And he says, How Kamashlan, you know what comes to teach you? The Isha is Bina, Dumya the Isha is Baila. 
that the relationship between the mother and the son is just like the relationship of a, of a, of a woman and her husband. What do you mean? Ma, we just learned before that a husband only yashins what the mother actually, what his wife actually had in her possession. If she predeceases her parents, so at the time when she died, she was only a row. She was a potential heir. Then when they, when her parents later on die, it doesn't go to the husband. It goes directly to the grandchildren. So just like that din applies to a husband and wife, the same din applies to a mother and her, and, and, uh, and her children and, and, and her children. That if she died before her parents, it doesn't go to her children. It goes to her parents' family, to the, to the, to the mother's side of the family. My issues by the end about Yajid to be cave is a husband is being machine shame how to learn shot, but we're learning like the Rajban. That the husband does not yash his wife, be cave it if she's in the cave, she does not pass on and, and then later on her father dies. We don't say that Mishmush that it goes to the wife, and then for the wife it goes sideways to the husband, but we say bypass the wife, go straight to the grandchildren. Af Ishas Bana, so to a woman and her son. If she dies, ain't have been Yoidish Imoy be cave. Here we're talking about no. If the son dies before the mother. If the son dies before the mother, and then then the mother dies, so the, you would say the mother then goes to the son, but he's in the cave, and then the son passes on to his father's brothers, because let's say he has no siblings or anything else, or to his own brothers. He passes on to his own brothers on his father's side, a shared common father, even though they might not be the sons of this woman, but because they are his brothers on his father's side, and we learned before that who yashins, only paternal brothers. So what happens if the son died before the mother? The father, without this, we would have thought that the son died before the mother, and then the mother died. Who yashins the mother? The son, in the cave. And then the, the, the dinam of the kuhur of, of, of Yerusha go on, and what happens to the son's chalik? He's dead. If he doesn't have any children of his own, it goes to the paternal brothers, which are not the children of this woman who died. That's what we would have thought. You go back to the normal dinim of Yerusha, of inheritance. So he says, no, that the son in the cave does not pass on that which is her. When he died, the, 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 when he died, the mother didn't die yet. So he didn't get Yash in his mother. So therefore, it does not go to his paternal brothers after if, if she dies afterwards. So while he's in the cave, he does not take it away from his mother and distribute it somewhere else. Ain had ben Yedish's email by cave, to give it to his paternal brothers. It stays on the maternal side. That's the Chiddush of the Mishnah. That's why the Mishnah repeats it, because there's a new din over here that we would not have known otherwise. We would have thought, that, like we had before, that the child yashes, if, if the, even though the child predeceases his mother, she dies, he yashes his mother, and then go back to the normal din of inheritance. If he doesn't have a children of his own, it goes to his paternal brothers. It doesn't matter that they don't share the same mother. Kamash Londa. Comes along Rabbi Yechon, Rabbi Yehuda, and he brings another opinion that completely argues on Mishnah, and that is that a mother does yashin her son. Al Mishnah clearly says twice that a mother does not inherit from her from her uh, does not inherit from her son. For son predeceases her, she doesn't get it. However, Omer Rabbi Yechon, Mishum Rabbi Yehuda, but Rabbi Shimon, Teisha says a very important rule. When do we say Omer Rabbi Yechon Omar, and when do you say Mishum? If you remember, many times Rabbi Yechon says the name of Shimon Yechoi. He never learned the name English from Shimon Yechoi. Couldn't have. And um, and um, and uh, and some other if he names he brings Mishum from previous generations. So taste is just generally if either if he didn't hear directly from the person you say Mishum or even if he did hear if it's not your Rabbi Muvik if it's not like Omar Rabbi Yechon Omar Rabbi Yanai or even if you heard it directly but if he's not your main teacher like it's a taste brings example Omar Rabbi Yechon Omar Rabbi Yanai Rabbi Yanai was one of the teachers of Rabbi Yechon. So, so therefore it says but if it was just a, a, a big time of Chacham, that Rabbi even heard directly it's Mishum as if to say there's a little bit of a distance here when I tell you a woman does yash in her son because and I have a shava. we use the word before matters before we use matzahs before to tell you, just like a son. How do we know that a son, when it comes to the mother's estate, we had a machlekes, when it comes to the mother's estate that the son yashas, how do you know uh, that a son yashas? We learned a kabochayim from a girl. All we know is that a girl yashas. The kabochayim of a girl. And then what about who gets first? So we said matzahs. We compare that you know, it says if a woman gets married to another tribe, then she yashes from two tribes. So it means we dash in that whatever the laws are from one tribe, the father is the same thing applies to the other tribe for the mother. It's just like by the father's estate, the son 
yashes before the sister. So to the mother's estate, the son yashes before the sister. The other opinion was we had with Rabbi Yechon ben Akatsov, and he said no. He said when it comes to the, the mother's estate, the girl and the boy yashes equally. He doesn't believe in matis. But if you believe in matis, that's a hekish. And we learned the din that a ben it, it precedes the daughter also when it comes to the mother's estate. So we're going to go further because ain't hekish or machza. You don't do a hekish halfway. The next thing we learn from the hekish is just like when it comes to the son passes away, the father yashes the son. So too, when the son passes away, the mother yashes the son as well. If there's no father there, the mother yashes. Shanema says, Mata is makish, Mata ain't Mata of, Mata of Yerish is just like by Mata of. The father yashes the son. At mata aim, each of your yashes the So over here, a woman yashes the son, yeah, or, or the daughter, whatever it is. <clears throat> then obviously, if the father is alive, even if she yashes it, the father takes it from her. So the father yashes. We're talking about if the father is not alive, the mother will yashin her son because we dashin this hekish called matris. We're comparing the shavit of the mother to the shavit of the father. What is this? Only first generation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could I, I told you, we'll learn Tanakh. We had more time. Yes. Actually, we're going to have it soon about Basel. Of course, for Paulus, for Basel. Is it no longer important to keep Basel? Like, it was only once things started to move around, they started to move around. It was only to, in order to establish the Chalakim. Yeah. Once you've established the Chalakim, then you already have your, in, in, your, in, your, your inalienable rights, and then we weren't mocked for anymore. They, they found a, a remez and a Pasik to say, We'll learn later about two bar of the Gemara. We'll talk about. You'll see. Passing it on to the other side. It's, it's transferring from one. That's it. One shave the other because uh, yeah, because it's paternal when it comes to uh, Yashin. But this opinion says here that a mother Yashin is her son, just like the father, only if the father's not alive. Why? Because of this hekish mata mata. Just like you use it for a son preceding a daughter, I'm going to use it also for the other part of the din is that a father yashes the child and mother yashes the child as well, if there's no father. Ace said, Rabbi Yechad Yehuda ben Shimon, Rabbi Yechad asked his, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shimon questions. Obviously, he heard it, Rabbi Yehuda ben Shimon, but that's what he says, Meshum is because he wasn't his main teacher. He says, it says in our Mishnah clearly, Ha'isha is b'no, Ha'isha is b'ayla, Va'achaya ain, and the brothers of the, of the mother, Manchilin v'loy na'achlin. They all bequeath and they don't inherit. Our Mishnah clearly says that a mother does not yash in her son. Oh, Malay said to him, I tell you the truth, he says, Mishnah Seinu ain't the day, Mishnah. This Mishnah is, I have no idea who, who came up with such an opinion. Our Mishnah, our Mishnah. But he, he said, the opinion is made, I'll see in a minute. So Moses said, what's the problem? Well, Lema, let us say that B'zchayi ben Akatsavi. Remember, B'zchayi ben Akatsavi says that a boy gets before a girl because you learn matas matas, right? He makes it the hekish. So therefore, he's the one who believes, he's the father of that hekish. And that's, um, the, uh, sorry, B'zchayi ben Akatsavi says he, he doesn't believe in the hekish. He says that when it comes to the mother's estate, the boy, the son and the daughter equally ashen. I, we hold that a son gets before the daughter because you make a hekish matas matas. Obviously, he doesn't believe in that hekish. So the author of our mission is a tzchayi, not the, I said before, a tzchayi ben akatsav. It's a tzchayi ben akatsav, the author of our mission, a pashat. So what's the problem? And our mission clearly says, it's our mission that a mother is not yashin the son. The ladosh matas says the mother can't be. Loi mesuk ben maslitzik of tzchayi ben akatsav. Why? The tani, it says in our mission, uh, it says in our mission, um, uh, sorry, what's the place? It says in our mission, um, the, oh, which says oh, Bnei Achri is the son of a sister. In other words, if let's say her, the son of a sister, her her brother died, and now there's only a girl left, and the girl Yashin her brother, and it passes down, and then she dies, it passes down to her son. So the Mishnah says, Vitana, so the Braisa came along and said, only Bnei Achris v'loi Bnei Achris. The Braisa came to explain, not argue with our Mishnah, it came to explain our Mishnah. What's the Mishnah saying here? Bnei Achris, to tell you why only Bnei Achris she say zera dachis. We want bnei achis to tell you that only the sons yashin and not the daughters. In this case, when if it's a brother passed away, he has no children, no father, he has no children, and it goes then uh, and it goes then sideways. Right before it goes to the father, it goes sideways. There's only a sister. It goes to a sister. She dies. It goes to her sons and not to her daughters. And more right, why not? We know that if there's no son, it goes to the daughter. Well, it can't be that the girl doesn't yashin. Why not? But Omer Rav Sheish is likadim. Who gets if the sister then dies? Who gets who yashin first? Her son rather than a daughter. Ah, so the Mishnah, our Mishnah itself doesn't even make sense. It's contradicting itself. 
It says clearly, and I mean, you're telling me the Mishnah is Chayim and Akatsa. It's Chayim and Akatsa says when it comes to a woman, the son and the daughter are equal. And what is our, and he's also about Mishnah, and yet, right, he's also about Mishnah. He doesn't believe in the Hekish, and that's why the mother doesn't ask him from the son. And this very same Mishnah says that if the sister died, her children, who gets first? The son rather than daughter. It's, and and they're coming from their mother. And Chayim and Akatsa says if you come from your mother's side, the son and daughter are equal. There's no, there's no priorities here. You tell me our mission is a chayim and a katzif. And that's why the mother does not yashin from the, 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 the our mission the mother and the mother the hekish and matas matas, which means you hold it a chayim and a katzif, that a boy and a girl are equal when it comes to the mother's estate. No. He holds that they're equal, and yet the, the b'raisa clearly says that lekadim, that when it comes to the, if the sister yashin, her brother, and then she dies, her children her son comes first, and then the daughter. But it's Chayim Katsu, they equal. And Vitan, the Mordech says, in fact, our Mishnah is how to make sense. Vitan, the Mordech, how do you understand our Mishnah? E Dodish Matas, if the Tanah does believe in the Hekish of Matas, and therefore the son gets before the daughter, even the mother's estate, then the mother, she yash and the son. Then they tell you, not the brother. A mother, she yash and the son. Just like in Matas, by the father's side. The father yash his son. So to Matas, the mother's side. The mother, she yash and the son. If you believe in the Hekish, because they have a rule, ain't Hekish le and he loyed Darish Matis, he doesn't dash in Matis, and that's why the father will yash it, not the mother. The Ben Kren Lebach is Amen Ole. So if he doesn't yash it, then how come if the sister's yashing your brother and then she dies, you tell me the son gets first? And the Bryce is explaining our Mishnah. What's going on? Our Mishnah doesn't make sense. Forget about this whole drosha here, who's the author of our Mishnah. Forget who the author is. The first part of the Mishnah um, believe, uh, what called, does not believe in the Hekish, of, of, uh, and then the second part of the Mishnah doesn't believe in the Hekish. Because the only way you can you can learn that a son gets before a daughter when it comes to the mother's estate is if you believe in a hekish. And the and the only way to learn that a mother uh, does the, a mother does not yash her son is if you don't believe the hekish. So how's that work? Really, you do dash and matis. No, you believe in the hekish, and that is why the son gets before the daughter, even in the mother. You no, know, the, the brother dies, the sister yashes the brother, and then she dies. Her son will get first the Yerusha before the daughter. Why? Because you believe in the hekish, matas, matas, just like in the father's estate, the son gets first, so to the mother's estate, the son gets first. No, boss. So the question is, how come the mother will not yashin her son? If you believe in the hekish, matas, matas, then just like the father yashins the son, so too, if there's no father, the mother should yashin her son or daughter. Vishani Hocha, could we have a Pasik, the Amakra? It says in the Pasik that Kol Bas Yoy Reshes Nachla. The Torah says every daughter is Yoy Reshes, Wood Yoy Reshes, which means that she inherits, but she doesn't bequeath. It could have just, um, um, it could have just said the Kol Bas Nachla, every girl who is entitled to Yerushas. Your is a verb telling you as if to say it's only one way. She only yashins but doesn't bequeath a, 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 to a mother. But the cold bas yereshes nachla yereshes ve'ena meyereshes. And a girl only inherits but she doesn't bequeath. And 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 that's how we yeah that's how we know that you don't the um, what do you call it? She doesn't. She only inherits from two camps, but she will not bequeath to two camps. She will bequeath to her father. But she won't bequeath to her mother. So this vart, the machlech yisrael had to learn something more. But this is how the rishbam learns his first shot. Because it could have said the chol bas nachla. You don't have to, the word yiresh is extra. Look at the pasuk chol bas nachla. That's what the pasuk is talking about. So we hear that chol bas nachla in the matzah and the yisrael. She a, a, a girl who shaykh to a, you know to yerusha from two matzahs by saying the chol bas yiresh is nachla. What you're saying is that. She she yash she only when it comes to both matas she only inherits but not both matas she bequeaths to only to one of them she will bequeath to to her father's uh, to her father's side but not to her mother's side okay we'll look tomorrow.